morning at the San Diego Zoo is a peaceful time when animals are awakening to begin their day. The day is young and the weather is cool, and the morning is the best time to start our journey at the San Diego Zoo. After a long night's rest, the animals are ready to get moving. This is when you'll see the most activity in the park, and there's no better way to see the grandeur of the San Diego Zoo than by taking the bus tour. The 35-minute bus tour will take you around the perimeter of the park and through the most traveled areas. The various habitats are connected by a series of trails. You'll see that there's a central focal point near the Bashor Bridge. From here, you can take the elevator and this connects the upper and lower sections of the park, meaning you can follow any of the trails downhill and they all lead to the same central point. First, let's head down Treetops Way. Not far from the front entrance is the amazing orangutan exhibit. Native to Indonesia and Malaysia, these great apes are expert climbers and spend much of their time in the trees. With long arms and short legs, they're about the size of a full-grown adult human. And they're incredibly intelligent, sharing, keeping track of exchanges, and cooperating with others. Gorillas are closely related to humans, sharing up to 99% of the same DNA as us. They're herbivores eating mostly plants, and they're the largest primates, with males growing up to 5 foot 7 or 1.8 meters tall, weighing up to 400 pounds. Gorillas live in troops with one male silverback leading the group. Female gorillas strike out on their own at about the age of 8 when they're capable of having babies. It's estimated that there are about 320,000 gorillas in the wild. Heading over to Tiger Trail, you'll find the Malayan Tigers. There are two exhibits here and you can view the tigers up close or from above. These tigers come from Malaysia where deforestation for agriculture and palm oil farming has devastated the natural ecosystem. With natural forests diminishing, two major tiger species in the area have become extinct and there are about 100 of these tigers remaining in the wild. Hippopotamus are semi-aquatic animals from sub-Saharan Africa. There are two species of hippo, the other being the pygmy hippo, which can also be found at the zoo. They're one of the largest land animals weighing up to 3,300 pounds or 1,500 kilograms. Surprisingly, they're related to whales, dolphins, and porpoises, having branched off about 55 million years ago. Hippos spend most of their days in the water and nights grazing for food. They're extremely territorial and have been known to attack boats and people. Once considered to be part of the chimpanzee species, bonobos actually have some subtle differences. They are the closest living relatives to humans and most human-like, using tools to find food and exhibiting complex social behaviors. They have a matriarchal social structure and members earn rank within a group by forming allegiances with each other rather than physical intimidation. Heading to the northern frontier, we find the polar bears, which are the largest bear species weighing up to 1,500 pounds. They live around the Arctic Circle where they spend so much time on the ice that they're actually considered marine mammals. They're believed to have evolved from a group of brown bears which were isolated by glaciers during an ice age around 150,000 years ago. They have special adaptations to life on the ice, such as large paws and pointy claws that help them with traction. Some really good places here to take pictures at the polar bear exhibit. It is so busy here today. It's complete pandemonium. Lions are the second largest cats after tigers at up to 10 feet long, weighing up to 500 pounds. They're the only social cat living in prides of just a few or up to 40 members, led usually by one dominant male, females, and their offspring. Lions have the loudest roar at 114 decibels. This loud roar helps them to establish their territory with other prides. Right next to the lion encounter is where you'll find the jaguars. You can see them up close during the trainer talks. Jaguars have one of the strongest bites of all predators. Their bodies are designed for wrestling large animals and they evolve this strength to break the necks of their prey. In the ice age, they were twice as large as they are today, but because of competition with humans for food, they ate smaller prey. And over time, their size decreased. 
You can recognize a jaguar by their rose-shaped camouflage called rosettes. They thrive in swamplands and tropical forests, but have also been found as far north as New Mexico. Here by the Elephant Odyssey is a really cool photo opportunity. Elephants are the largest land animals weighing up to 9 tons or 18,000 pounds, averaging 10 feet tall. They're renowned for their intelligence, problem-solving ability, memory, and social behaviors. They use their trunks to gather food or lift small and large objects. Female elephants stay in groups composed of mother elephants and their offspring, led by a matriarch. Male elephants separate from the group during their teenage years to live alone or with groups of other males. Right next to the elephants are the camels. Found in the Middle East, Asia, and Australia, camels are adapted for hot, arid climates and can travel for days without water. They're able to drink up to 50 gallons in a matter of minutes. Contrary to popular belief, the hump on their back doesn't hold water. It's actually a fatty deposit that helps them to remain cool. Just next door are their distant relatives, the llamas, which are pack animals that evolved in South America. Their ancestors migrated across the Bering Strait into Asia. They're related to camels, but lack the iconic hump on their back. And one interesting tidbit is that llamas can have fangs. Once spanning from Mexico to Canada, condor populations decreased drastically from ingesting poisonous foods and lead. In 1982, there were only 22 left in the wild, all of which were taken into captivity for protection and to assist in population recovery. With a great effort by organizations such as the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance, today there are now over 200 condors in the wild. Although they still require a lot of wildlife management. And here's the meerkat exhibit. Living in mobs of 20 or more members, meerkats are very social. These pack hunters are part of the mongoose family. They hunt for scorpions, lizards, and small mammals. They're about one foot long, weighing about two pounds. Being this small, there is a threat from larger predators. One meerkat will always act as a lookout to keep an eye out for any danger, and if there's any threat, the lookout warns the mob so they can seek shelter. Sometimes referred to as koala bears, koalas are actually marsupials. They give birth to their young who live in a pouch for the first six months of their life. They are very particular about the eucalyptus leaves that they eat, and the ones that they choose are actually toxic to other animals. They spend about 22 hours a day sleeping and all of their waking hours eating. There are less than 100,000 left in the wild, and they're facing increasing danger from habitat loss, deforestation, and forest fires. Just a few steps away from the koalas are the cheetahs. Cheetahs are the fastest land animals, accelerating quickly and running up to 70 miles per hour. They eat medium-sized prey such as impalas, gazelles, and springbok. Cheetahs are daytime hunters and stalk their prey, getting as close as possible before pouncing and chasing their prey. As they are smaller than other predators, they need to eat quickly before others arrive to claim their food. And now for a quiz question. Which pattern belongs to the feline with the strongest bite? If you have the answer, leave it in the comments below. This video will be in two parts coming up, so click here to continue the adventure.